Thank you for coming. You're welcome. Yeah. Um, so uh, let's talk about uh, how you met uh, Bernstein. I, I know that uh, in, in the 1990s you, you were studying in, in London. That's right. right. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and then you joined the Pacific Music Festival in, in Sapporo, in Japan. It's quite a distant place. Why, why, what made you want to join that festival and eventually met I didn't, I didn't know anything about it. The, uh, it's a Pacific music festival for countries bordering on the Pacific Ocean, which of course England is not. <laughs> but uh, the, the orchestra that was going to be uh, teaching at the festival was the London Symphony Orchestra. And so they, they had uh, not enough cellos in the festival because it was the first festival, that, uh, uh, the first Pacific festival. They didn't have enough cellos, so I was, I was doing a competition in London with the, with the LSO, the Shell LSO competition in school, and uh, I didn't win it. But they asked me if I could uh, if I could go out to Japan tomorrow, <laughs> and and so that's how I arrived at the festival. And yeah, it was just luck, really, <laughs> on my part. <laughs> so, uh, do you have audition with my orchestra? In yeah, when, when we arrived, we had we, everyone auditioned for places in the orchestra, and I managed to get the principal cello spot. So, uh, yeah, that, that's how I, I did it. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's your fr first impression on my school? It's really difficult to describe, because he was such a legend. I mean, by the time that I met him, he, was, he had done everything already. He was a brilliant pianist, and... What, the most famous conductor alive, and an amazing uh, composer, as we've heard tonight. And, you know, he was one of my heroes. He, he single-handedly revived Mahler, yeah. you know, with the, with the Vienna Philharmonic. I mean, Mahler was in, wasn't played much uh, before Leonard Bernstein revived him. That, that, what an what a achievement, you know, it was incredible. So, uh, I met him, we were rehearsing the Schumann Second Symphony, Sapporo. We were rehearsing with a man called Eiji Ue, mm -hmm. a famous uh, Japanese conductor, a very fine conductor. And he was drilling us with the Schumann, and we were you know, very, very focused, concentrating really hard. We had several rehearsals already. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then Leonard Bernstein came into the back of the concert hall. It was a huge room, three times the size of this room, maybe, and a hundred people in the orchestra, and lots of people watching, and you know, very excited to meet Benchstein. And he came in and stood at the back of the hall and a few people in the orchestra you know, saw him and the focus starts to sort of shift <laughs> from the conductor. And the conductor is trying to look at us and the focus is shifting. And, and he's walking around and looking and laughing and waving to people that he knows. And one by one, the focus shifts over there to Benchstein. And it was as if he had this kind of magic charisma fantastic quality, you know, that I've never seen that before or since. And uh, eventually, even the Eiji Ui's focus also was uh, uh, behind him as well. And then the, uh, the rehearsal ground to a halt and we all stopped and just applauded him. And, and he stood there, you know, like this, loving it. <laughs> um, can you share your experience of your first time to talk to him? Well, I mean, I think I, I spoke to him a few times, you know, mm -hmm. during the, I was six weeks we were with him, we were working with him. And, uh, yeah, he's, I was asking questions constantly, yeah. <laughs> probably too many questions. And, uh, no, he was, he was always really generous with his comments. But it was on stage where the real magic was happening. It was really amazing the way that he could, uh, um, get everybody's attention. He didn't even need to say very much at all, actually. You were just so focused on him. I remember one time, uh, another conductor, she was called Marion Olson. Mm -hmm. She now conducts the Baltimore Symphony Orchestra. Uh, she was conducting a piece, and she was having a trouble with one corner of the piece. We, we couldn't figure out where to play. And then she turned around to Meister of Bernstein and said, you know, what, what am I doing wrong? And he came. Uh, and he looked at the music and he says, I don't know where 
it's just, and then we, he did something and we all played perfectly together. And, and he looked at her and he goes, what did I do? <laughs> so he, he, couldn't, uh, he didn't really know actually what he did. He just had this ability to make you play exactly the way. That's fantastic. Um, I, maybe, maybe some some of us uh, have watched the, the video, the footage, the video from the Pacific Music Festival, and I'm I'm quite sure if if we watch that clip, we we, we may remember a scene that might be problem. <laughs> <laughs> What's happened, Andrew? <laughs> I it's all coming, right? I really don't remember. I think um, I don't know. I just think he but yes, how, how, how the players interact with my children's and he just treat you as friends or kids? And immediately, yeah, he was so friendly and warm and generous. Well, I mean, he was really sick, I guess. He had an emphysema, emphysema and a, a lung problem, you know. He could barely breathe. But uh, in the final concert, we played the Schumann Symphony. And uh, he was jumping around on, on the podium, and so much energy, it was, it was astonishing how much energy, he was like a teenager, mm -hmm. with absolute joy, and, you know, that, this incredible energy. And after the concert, he walked off, it was the best concert I ever did, you know, up until that point, absolutely the best one. And uh, after the concert, he dropped his baton on, on the stage. And I picked it up and I had the baton. I don't know why I didn't keep it. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, like a good boy, I, I went to his dressing room to give it back to him. And I was really shocked. He was, he was sitting in a chair, slumped in the chair, and he had the oxygen mask. And the nurses were, like, you know, tending to him. He was, he was so sick. He didn't have anything left. But it was pure love of music. That, that, that kept him alive, I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, oh, it was a magic experience, it really was. So, last question. Um, which is your favorite piece by Bernstein? Mm -hmm. I think it has to be Candide, the, the overture I mean, I love, I love a lot of his work, mm -hmm. but Candide, I grew up listening to it and studying it, yeah. and playing it, you know, it's the first, sort of the first piece that he learned as a player, you know, as an official player. So I, I, it's still really special. But I love all of this work, actually. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Mr. Bambang, for your sharing.